Hey, what's happening everyone? So it is finally the new year, which means it's time for me to make a new updated guide on what FPV drones you should be buying and flying in 2025. I'm here to save you a ton of time when it comes to picking the best drone for you. In the past year, there have been a ton of new releases and new equipment that is available to us. So if you saw my video that I did last year, this is an updated version of that. I'll be answering a ton of your questions in this video, such as do you need a more beginner or a more advanced drone? How much should you be spending on a drone and why is there a price difference? And most importantly, what is the best drone for you? Let's do it. If you're new here, my name is Danny McGee and I fly FPV drones for a living. I fly small drones that are made for flying indoors. I fly medium sized drones that are really good at freestyle, even really big drones like the Helion here that are really good for mountain surfing and pretty much everything in between. One of the big problems with FPV is there is essentially an infinite amount of options that you can go with, which makes it challenging when you're trying to pick one to buy. So my only goal for this video is just to kind of wade through all of that and just help you figure out which one's best for you. Every single drone that I'm gonna be talking about here today is a bind and fly drone, which means you can just buy it, hook it up to your controller and goggles and you're good to go. You're gonna need a good pair of goggles and a controller to fly these drones with. There's a few different options with different price points right now, so I'm gonna cover that at the end of this video. So make sure you stick around until then. And all of the goggles slash controller combos are gonna work with any of these drones. Okay, so how I'm gonna break this down is by size. So I'm gonna start with the smaller ones first and then work up to the bigger ones. And that also pretty much correlates with price point because budget is definitely a big limiting factor for people getting into the hobby. So let's Let's start out with this one, the DJI Neo. It's a tiny 130 something gram drone that's really perfect for anyone looking to get a drone and just see if they like the hobby. It comes in at $199, making it the cheapest on this list. If I were you, I would definitely snag the combo, which comes with two extra batteries and a charging hub. One of the reasons why it's a great beginner option is because it is super, super durable. These prop guards really protect everything in case of a crash. And when you're first learning FPV, you crash a ton. Another reason is it has a GPS inside, so you can just press a button and it'll return to home. And having an oh shit button when you're flying FPV is so nice when you're first learning. So you can actually fly this drone with multiple different controllers. You can fly it as an FPV drone with goggles and a controller, or you can use a normal drone controller that hooks up to your phone, or you can also control it without a controller at all and just hook it up to your phone and do a bunch of really cool like tracking features. Again, I'll be talking about goggles and controllers at the end of this video. Now, this drone is small, so it has a small camera. So the videos that you're gonna be getting out of it, they're good enough to like show to your friends and family and stuff like that, but you're not gonna be getting these amazing cinematic masterpieces. It does shoot 4K 30, but since it's a small sensor, the image just kind of looks crunchy. Like you can tell it was shot on a small camera. You also can't put an action camera on top of this, so you're just kind of limited with the videos you're gonna get. But regardless, it's great for people just kind of getting into FPV, and it's a cheap option to just see if you like the hobby. Okay, next up, I wanna talk about my number one pick for beginners, which is the DJI Avada 2. The Neo is a really solid option if you are on a bit of a budget, but if you can afford the Avada 2, I would highly recommend it because in addition to being super durable and having a GPS return to home feature, this thing is quite a bit bigger. So it has a bigger sensor, has actually a really solid camera on it. And just because it's bigger, you can do more long range flights and do some mountain surfing with it. Because the Avada also shoots great video, if you do like the hobby, you won't have to upgrade right away to a bigger, better drone. To buy the drone only, it's $489 dollars making it one of the cheapest on this list and even though this is my top pick for beginners i use it all the time for professional shoots because for one the footage is much better so it's definitely usable and then i also just mount a gopro on top if i do want a little bit better quality the footage from the first avada was decent but this one is a huge upgrade it shoots up to 4k 120 and shoots in d log m which makes it so much easier to color grade your footage by the way if you're interested in color grading your footage exactly how you see here on this channel and all the footage that you've seen in this video. I have a link down in the description below to my LUT pack, which are basically just like video filters that you put on top of your footage to really give it that like cinematic look. On top of that, it is insanely durable. I have crashed this thing so many times and literally never even had a propeller break, which is kind of insane because that happens all the time on my other drones. And like I said, when you're first learning, you're just gonna be tanking the thing constantly. The range on this thing is also pretty nuts. I've brought it out to 2.6 miles, which for a drone, this style is completely insane. The reason for that is it has amazing transmission quality and a really high battery time. And usually when you're flying long range, you're not really limited by the transmission distance. You're more so limited by the battery. So again, if you can afford 
board, the Avada 2, it is my number one choice for beginners by far. Okay, so now at this point of the video, all the drones that I'm gonna be talking about are big enough to be able to accommodate putting an action camera on top. And that allows you to get super solid, professional looking footage. If you're looking to make money from this in a professional way, these next drones are for you. The Avada 2 is solid enough, but usually, like I said, I mount a GoPro on top of it just to get the best footage possible. And 95% of my professional work is shot on GoPro. I also do wanna leave a quick note in here as far as action cameras go, because that has been a big discussion over the past like four or five months. There has been a ton of talk about whether or not GoPro is still the best action camera on the market, and people are comparing it to the Osmo Action 5 and the Insta360 Ace Pro 2. Don't get me wrong, they're all great cameras, but GoPro is still a very clear winner in my mind, especially for FPV. I will say I do work with GoPro, but the reason that I work with GoPro is because they make the best cameras out there. The Ace Pro 2 is still pretty far behind the Osmo and the GoPro, but the Osmo is pretty close and there's a bunch of comparisons out there online right now. And if you couldn't tell yourself, most of those videos, those people are being compensated for that. And while I think it's amazing that there are companies out there willing to pay creators, because I mean, that's, that's how we make our living. A good majority of those comparisons are just completely disingenuous. For example, the GoPro shoots at 5.3K versus only 4K on the DJI Osmo. So people will downgrade the 5.3K on the GoPro to keep things fair, which is just really shady in my opinion, because 5.3K has 200% more pixels than 4K. Obviously, I absolutely love DJI. Every single product on this list is a DJI product, and I do think the Action 5 is a great camera. And I think competition is great because it causes both companies to get better. But if you are in the market for an action camera, please, please, please do yourself a favor and watch this video that my friend Chris Rogers did. It is by far the best comparison out there on the internet, and he even left a Dropbox link in the description so you can actually see the original files for yourself. I'll leave a link up here. Okay, side note done, let's get back to drones. Now, I'm not gonna cover my sub 250 gram drones in this video, just because they're drones that you actually have to build, but if there is enough interest, leave a comment down below and I might make a video about those ones. Hey, what's up guys? I just wanna take a quick second to talk to everyone watching this that plans on editing videos. As you can see, I'm not in my normal office right now. I am on the motorcycle trip that I was talking about in South America, but while I'm on the road, I'm still doing some editing here and there. And I wanna to talk to you guys about a tool that has saved me so much much time recently. You guys have probably heard me talk about Artlist's AI voiceover feature on this channel before, which is basically a super simple, easy way to create high quality voiceovers completely on your own on your computer without having to hire a voice actor. Voice actors are expensive and they take a while to do all the back and forth and everything, but with Artlist you can create it instantly. You can make videos like this completely with AI. Deep within the jungle lies a monster, a ferocious beast that rules over the land a gerbil. He may not look menacing, but due to the fact that I have such an epic voice, you need to trust me. And right now, he's coming for you. And there's been a bunch of really cool upgrades to it. You can now even change the language and the accent. It's insanely easy to filter to find the exact voice that you want. And then when you do finally find the voice, it's super easy to customize with a bunch of different options to change. If you're editing on Premiere Pro, you can even do the AI voiceover feature inside the editor. If you wanna try the new AI voiceover feature plus all the other amazing things Artlist has to offer, there's a link down below that'll give you two months for free. Thank you Artlist for sponsoring this video and thank you for just making such an amazing product. Okay. Now back to the video. So as of January 2025, DJI has officially released the brand new O4 air unit, which is a huge upgrade for FPV. If you don't know what an air unit is, it's basically the internal components that communicate with your goggles and controller to control the drone. And it's a substantial upgrade over the O3. The two biggest reasons are one, video quality. So the O4 is gonna have the exact same camera as the Avada 2. So again, the video footage that you're getting out of it is gonna be really solid. And it's really the first time that I've ever actually considered potentially not putting an action camera on my drone in certain situations. The other reason that it is better is transmission quality. So so the range on the O3 air unit is 10 kilometers and the range on the O4 is 15. Realistically, most people aren't gonna be maxing out the range on these things. But the other thing where transmission quality really helps is when you're flying with obstacles in between you and the drone. So think flying in a building or flying in a forest where there's a bunch of trees around. I have a video comparing the O3 and the O4 in way more depth up here. So you can click that if you wanna check it out. But you'll notice some of my quads here have O3 and some have O4. And part of that is because even though the video quality is a little bit better, I'm still gonna be mounting 
mounting a GoPro on top of my drones. And the actual FPV experience itself isn't gonna be that different. I will say O4 is way more fun to fly because the image that you're seeing when you're flying is so much more higher resolution. But if you're gonna be mounting the same action camera on top, your footage isn't gonna be that different. Unfortunately, I'm filming this video pre-release of O4, so it's really hard for me to say the price points between O3 and O4 drones, but I think it's safe to assume that O3 will be a little bit cheaper. As the year goes on, I expect all drone manufacturers to kind of switch all their drones over to O4, but at least the beginning part of the year, you're still gonna be able to buy O3 drones. All right, let's talk about some drones. First off, I wanna talk about my five inch drones. These things are a great middle ground size and absolutely rip at 100 miles an hour, can do flips and do some really solid mountain surfing. Five inch drones are really just great all around FPV drones. And if you're someone who thinks you're gonna want a bigger, more powerful drone than the Avada, this is where I would look. So first off, let's talk about this drone here, which has a strap hanging off of it. <laughs> this drone is the iFlight Nazgul DC5 Eco. This thing is probably the best five inch drone on the market for the money, coming in at $380 without the GPS installed and $420 for one with a GPS. Now, these GPSs on all of these drones aren't gonna be near as accurate as the ones on the Neo and the Avada, but they can save your ass in an emergency situation if you lose connection. So I'd highly recommend going with the GPS option. This one comes shipped with the O3 air unit. I have it installed with an O4 right now just because I was doing some testing with it. Like I said, I expect iFlight to switch these over to O4 as the year goes on. Now, if you wanna spend a little bit more money and are looking for more of a premium drone, this is the iFlight Nazgul Evoke F5. This is basically the more sporty, fancier version of the Eco. It has upgraded motors, an upgraded flight controller, and nice side panels to keep the dust out of your electronics. It comes in at $600 for the Dead Cat version with GPS installed. If you're unfamiliar, Dead Cat basically just means that this is not symmetrical. So the front arms are more shooting out, whereas the bottom arms are shooting back. They also make make X drones, which put the front props further up, but because they're further forward, they can get in the view of your camera, so I always go with Dead Cat. Okay, next up is iFlight's brand new Cineflow 5 pre-installed with the O4 air unit. And this is my favorite five inch drone I've ever flown. It flies super smoothly, has upgraded electronics as well, is more efficient in the air for longer flight times, and is just kind of like a more upgraded, refined version of the Nazgul. The air unit is positioned near the front here, which allows for better heat dissipation and just how they designed it, it's way easier to remove and install than previous versions. These side plates are also super easily removable without taking the top plate off so you can make minor repairs without deconstructing your whole drone. And because it has O4, if you aren't going to buy an action camera, you can definitely use that camera to get amazing shots. Right now, I'm unsure of the price, but I'll leave it right. Next up, we're getting into more long range drones. So these are the ones that I use for long range mountain diving. A bigger drone means you can put bigger batteries on there and because the props are bigger, it's more efficient in the air leading to longer flight times. And before I get into the ultimate long range Chungus drone, the Helion, I wanna talk about my seven inch drones. Now, I've flown several of these throughout the years. This right here is the Gep RC Moz 7, but I've also flown the iFlight Chimera 7. And the reason that I got this Moz, honestly, was just because I crashed my Chimera into the ocean in Alaska, which was really sad, because I loved that thing. But they're pretty similar drones. And right now, the Moz 7 is $668, and the Chimera is $701. That is oddly specific. Like I said, both handle really similar and also have pretty similar range. I've flown the Moz out to 4.5 kilometers, which is more than enough to pretty much do any mountain diving you wanna do. It's perfect for ridgeline dives. You just have to sacrifice a little bit of freestyle performance to get that. So you're not gonna be doing a bunch of flips and hitting tiny gaps, but honestly, in my opinion, long range is the most fun thing to use FPV for. It just allows you to kind of explore landscapes that you'd never get to see if you were just hiking. Whether you get the Moz or the Chimera, it's really up to you. By the way, there are affiliate links to all these products down in the description below. So if you are already gonna buy these products, it would mean a ton if you use those links just to support me, support my channel so I can make more videos like this. Next up, let's talk about the brand new iFlight Cine LR. Similar to how the Cineflow 5 was just an upgrade on the previous iFlight 5 inch drones, that's what this is for iFlight 7 inch drones. In addition to being sleeker, having upgraded electronics and better flight efficiency for longer flight times, it also comes pre-installed with O4 so you can get beautiful videos right on the drone. And it also has those easily removable side panels. This will definitely be my go-to seven inch drone and probably my most flown drone out of all of these. This is really a top of the line seven inch option. Okay, finally, I wanna talk about the Chungus Among Us, the Helion 10. 
This thing is without a doubt the best long range drone on the market. Bigger props means it flies more efficiently and you can put a absolutely massive battery on this thing, giving insane flight times from 15 to 20 minutes. As far as range goes, I've brought this thing out to six kilometers and when I got back, I still had a ton of battery to go. One of the big problems that people have had with the Helion is having jello in their footage, which is basically just vibrations in the drone, which make your footage look super shaky. But how to fix that is just by mounting your battery super, super far back. So my battery when I'm flying is like sticking out to here. And you might be thinking, if this is the best long range drone on the market, why is this not your most flown drone? And the reason is it's freaking huge. <laughs> so if I'm on a trip where space is limited, I'll usually just bring the seven inch just because it compacts a lot easier. But if I'm doing a road trip or something where I'm kind of working out of a car, I'll always bring this just because it does give you access to a lot further terrain. iFlight and Two Raw Aerials, which is owned by one of my friends named Ellis, they're actually working on a V2 of the Helion. So when that does come out, I'll update the links down below to that because the new one is also gonna have 04. Okay, this is an extremely long video, but I'm trying to be as detailed as possible so this can be the only video that you guys watch. And before I wrap things up, I wanna quickly talk about the goggle and controller combo that you should be buying. And this is kind of where FPV gets a little bit confusing because there's so many different options and directions that you can go, but I'm gonna break it down for you super simply, allowing you to hook everything up in just a couple minutes. Everything that I'm recommending is from DJI. In the FPV community, there are a couple different receiver protocols, which is basically just like a component that's in your drone that communicates with your controller. And some FPV pellets are super diehard about them. One of them being ELRS and one of them being Crossfire. But I always recommend just going with the DJI stuff because it simply just works. If you're using ELRS or Crossfire, you have to install an additional component into your drone, making it a little bit more expensive. And when you're linking everything up, you're more likely to run into issues because it's on different protocols. I've used both ELRS and Crossfire Crossfire, and to be honest, it is exactly the same. Technically, the range on paper is better with both of those, but you're still using the DJI goggles, so you're limited there anyways. And I've had the exact same amount of fail safes and issues with all the systems. So with that said, when you are going to purchase your FPV drone, just make sure you don't add an ELRS receiver or a Crossfire receiver, and just choose the no additional receiver option. Okay, so personally, I fly with the DJI Goggles 3 and the DJI FPV Remote Controller 3, which comes in at 490 $99 for the goggles and $199 for the controller. These are the top of the line models that will allow you to take advantage of all the cool things that are upgraded with the O4 air unit, such as racing mode and the better transmission. If you get these, you're sort of future-proofed. Now, if you want to save some money, you do have a couple other options. One of them being the DJI Goggles 2 and the DJI FPV Remote Controller 2. You can also use the FPV Remote Controller 2 with the DJI Goggles Integra. The Integra costs $349 and the Goggles 2 are $450 but they both have pretty similar specs. If you're looking for the absolute cheapest way to get into FPV, DJI just released the Goggles N3, which is basically a box goggle. So all of these goggles have two separate screens, but that one's a little bit bigger and just has one big screen. It costs $199, which is DJI's cheapest goggles yet. And you lose a lot of the premium specs that you get with these more expensive goggles. But if you're really unsure if you even want to get into FPV and you just want the cheapest possible setup, you could go with the Neo and a set of N3s. However, in my opinion, it'd probably be a better move to just get a used pair of Integras. Okay, so let's wrap things up and talk about what is the best drone from this list for you. If you're wanting to get into FPV and just see if you like the hobby, get the Neo. If you're someone who has a bit more budget to spend and you want a more powerful drone with better camera specs and is my number one pick for beginners, get the Avada 2. If you know you're gonna wanna carry an action camera on top of your drone and get something that absolutely rips, go for a five inch. Get the Nazgul Eco if you're on a little bit more of a budget and the Cineflow 5 if you want top of the line. If this is the 87th video that you watch and you're going crazy trying to figure out which drone to buy, just get a five inch. They're great for a ton of different things. If you know you're someone who's definitely gonna wanna be doing mountain surfing and flying more long range, get a seven inch. All of the options I talked about are very solid, but in my opinion, I would go for the iFlight Cine LR. If literally all you care about is flying really far away from yourself and you don't mind carrying a giant drone around, get the Helion 10. I will say if you've never had a long range drone before, I'd recommend getting a seven inch over the Helion because pretty much the only thing that you can use the Helion for is long 
medium range, whereas the seven inch can be used for a little bit of everything. Okay, wow, yeah, that was a long video. If you guys are already gonna be picking up any of these drones, it would mean the world to me if you use the affiliate links down in the description below, because I do get a little bit of a kickback off of those, and these videos just take so much work to put together, so it goes a long way in helping the channel. Also, if you're interested in checking out the LUT pack that I used to color grade all of the footage that you just saw in this video, I'll leave a link down to that below as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one. Wow, that might be my longest YouTube video in a long time. <laughs>